Hey everybody, Nick here, and today a video that is long overdue. Unfortunately, it turns out if you take off for a Thursday through a Sunday, much like if Satan goes bald, you got hell to pay. Get it, hell to pay? Uh, anyways, um, and so I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, my favorite knives from Blade Show. A lot of people talked to me and said, you know, Nick, what are you, what, what are you looking for? What are you looking to pick up at Blade? And my, my answer, quite honestly, was information. I wanted to try a bunch of things from a bunch of people and see who I need to be keeping an eye on and who I can pretty safely disregard. And I feel like I, I got that. I feel like I found a lot of great makers and, uh, you know, found a lot of makers I wasn't so interested in. And so today, what I want to do is just talk about the makers that really impressed me uh, and award my, my top four knives of Blade Show because, uh, you know, I'm really, uh, there was some great stuff there. So let's just jump into it, okay? Okay, so first off, I want to talk a little bit about my favorite custom makers. As you guys know, I don't talk about custom knives on the channel very much for a couple of reasons. First off, it's weird to review a custom knife. Like, check out this beautiful thing, you can't get one, aha. But second, um, custom knives tend to be doing something different than what I'm after. I tend to look at knives as functional tools that can also look pretty and display excellence. Whereas their goal is to display excellence and look pretty, and if they function, that's cool too. But no one's really looking at them in that way. So customs don't tend to be my neck of the woods. And I think that's going to remain that way. But um, I did want to comment on some custom makers who did impress me. One of these folks was Brian the Nado, there we go, of Shop by Design. He actually is kind of straddling that line between mid-tech and custom in that he makes repeated runs of one particular model. Frankie and the Bird actually picked one of these guys up. And I can state beyond any shadow of a doubt that the guy is doing it right. He seems to have good tolerances. His detents are great. The knives on the whole are just really, really impressive. The reason I didn't bring one home is because they are all freaking huge. For him, the mini Typhoon model is three and a half inches. If your mini model is three and a half inches, then no. I'm sorry, that's not mini. Instead, he needs to make the Micro Typhoon or the Nano Typhoon or the Femto Typhoon. He needs to make a tiny freaking Typhoon that the rest of us can carry. But that said, what he was making was incredible. He had some great knives on the table, some of which were just not for sale, which was great. Let me see the high-end work. And he actually ended up winning the Best Custom Knife uh, Award from Blade Show in the Tactical category. Uh, and it was well-deserved. This knife was one hell of a knife, although I'll say it's really weird to handle a frame lock flipper where the other side of the blade is sharp. Hey, uh, one almost got scary. But anyways, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's Brian the Doe. He is absolutely on my radar for the future here. Next guy is Scott Matsuoka. Now, Scott Matsuoka is, uh, he actually did a collaboration with Kaiser Knives recently, the Kala. I got a review of that one coming up one of these days. Um, but it's a nice knife, and indeed, his customs are way nicer. He had all the fit and finish one would expect. He had a very, very nice set of actions on them. They were just, they were impressive knives. And this little guy here almost went home with me. I knew it probably wouldn't get carried that much because it's a little bigger than I'd want, but it was very, very close. And I, I like Scott overall. He was a personable guy, and his logo combines two of my favorite things, waterfowl and wordplay, because it's a duck that spells Scott. Oh, can't argue with that. But anyways, big, big fan of his work. Impressive. Mike Cherney, and I'm sure I'm butchering that, but um, he does great work as well. This is a maker that you've probably heard of. I, I think he's like Scorpion Knives on Instagram, something like that. But whatever it is, his work was impressive. And that was one of the things that was really interesting to me is, you know, if you walk around Blade, you see tables for everybody, all the names you heard of. And some of them are really impressive to me personally. Some of them were actually not all that impressive. Like, okay, I don't know why you're that famous. But, you know, that's okay. This guy 100% deserves every bit of his fame. And I'm not saying people I'm not featuring don't. I'm just saying this was really impressive to me. All of his knives were mechanically sound, were beautifully fit and finished, and just beautiful designs overall. I loved his work. Very, very cool stuff. Next guy is Martinus van Wyk. This is a guy I've reviewed before. I reviewed an early model of one of these guys, a little sodbuster pattern from him. And thing is, Martinus, in addition to being a nice person, 
remarkable guy, continues making knives, both on his own as in a, uh, and in a collaboration, I want to say Trison Knives, the R-I-S-O-N. And look, he's doing great work still. I am very, very impressed with Martinus, and if he keeps doing this, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with down there in South Africa. A uh, very impressive guy. Next guy is Enrique Pena. This is not everybody's freaking heart of Pena knives. This is not unusual. Thing is, though, handling his stuff, I finally got it. Like, okay, that's mechanical excellence. This guy is not just making knives that are pretty, but he's making knives that are pretty and pretty excellent. So I was very, very impressed with it. Um, not necessarily my style, but at this point, I completely understand why people go so crazy for his work. Well done. Glenn Waters is a guy whose work is completely outside of my domain. He makes what I would consider to be art knives. These are knives that you would not carry, uh, except if you really wanted to show off a piece of art. Um, because you can see here that there were actual, you know, in addition to being engravings, there were gold inlays, there were beautiful, uh, you know, the, the materials he's using are just spectacular. These are objects that are best admired with a loop, that are best thought of in terms of their abject artistic value rather than his functional tools. Yeah, they cut things, but that's not what they're about. But look, even to me, who is a function-first guy, these were super impressive. This little guy especially was just, oh my God, blow me away impressive. And so I got to give a shout out to Glenn, and nice, really nice guy too, for making these incredible pieces here. Um, then Brad Zinka. Brad Zinka is a name you've probably heard before, at the very least associated with the Boker Urban Trapper. And uh, we stopped by his custom table, the Frankie Bird and I, and every damn knife on that table was nicely done. He had a bunch of knives in actual scaled handle patterns, and he had a bunch of these ultra light models. And each and every one of them just had a spectacular action. Really, really nice knives here. Uh, Zinko was blowing me away and was another one of those makers where I damn near pulled the trigger and I had to remind myself, you know, I'm, I don't do customs that often, but look, his customs are good. Big, big fan of his and I can't wait to check his stuff out next year. This guy I had never heard of ahead of time. A guy named Turning Point Knives, a Tom Hurd. What he makes are these very interesting kind of artistic knives, but this is actually a bolster-fired automatic knife. What you got here is this little guy tucks in there, there's a spring, and then in order to fire the knife, what you do is you press the bolster, I believe in this case, up. Yeah, I think you press the bolster up, and that actually releases the blade so that it fires out there. And so what you end up with is a knife that is kind of slip jointy, but is actually an automatic. And it's beautiful, and it's well done. I was just, it was like, wow, okay, this is cool. I've seen some other people do designs like that. I think Protec has one model. But as far as automatics go, this is about as classy as they get, in my opinion. So that's very nice. Um, Casey Gray is another maker I hadn't heard of before Blade Show, um, but I was really impressed with. This little guy almost went home with me. Not only was the price very good, but the action was incredible. Very, very nice work on the whole, and uh, a big fan of that. Stan Wilson. This is kind of a duh moment because Stan Wilson uh, of the Sam, uh, Stan Wilson non-flipper flipper is kind of known to be one of the greatest custom knife makers of all time. But the thing is, he is one of the greatest custom knife makers of all time. I've got a chance to handle this guy. It's a Stan Wilson non-flipper flipper. That means it's a flipper knife, but the way it works is that the other bolster is actually the flipper tab. So you pull back on the bolster to fire the knife, and then this bolster, if you turn it the other direction, undoes the back lock. Look, um... There were, I had many cool experiences at Blade Show, but being able to not only handle a Stan Wilson non flipper flipper, but to be able to get walked through its operation by Stan Wilson itself, itself himself, it was absolutely freaking incredible. I, this was a great knife, and that was a great experience, and oh man, was that cool. So uh, Stan Wilson absolutely impressed me, but again, no major shock there. So yeah. Um, so this is where we'll get into my, uh, the, the actual picks that I've made for the show, so let's do that. Okay, first I want to talk about two knives that were shown off and very, very impressive, but weren't quite in their final form, so I couldn't really judge them against completed knives. And, uh, first one of these was the Wii Knives and Elijah Isham, uh, uh, Eschaton. 
So, look, um, Elijah is a nice guy. I met him at the show. Really, really cool, fun to talk to. Showed me a lot of his work, and he seems to be designing something for everybody lately, uh, including this little guy right here. This is the Kaiser Megatherium, uh, which is a crazy design, uh, but it's pretty cool. The Eschaton is a crazy knife. It's done in concert with Wii Knives, and... Uh, Oh my god. I mean, at some level, it's completely freaking insane. It looks like a prop out of the Michael Bay Transformers movies, but at another level, it's super compelling. It's not a knife that's meant to open envelopes. It's a knife that's designed to push the envelope, but the thing is, it's it's still functionally pretty cool. You've got yourself the decent enough ergonomics. I mean, it's just, it's a neat knife. And the other thing that's beautiful about this is that this knife, although this particular prototype has star screws, the final production version is going to be in Torx. And that's because Wii Knives is abandoning star-shaped screws. Holy crap, it's happening! Hallelujah! 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 Uh, seriously, this has been a confirmed thing. They have realized that that was a terrible freaking idea and are moving back to a fastener that the rest of the world doesn't hate. So, Wii, thank you so much for that. But this knife itself is a beautiful thing, and Elijah himself is a beautiful thing in terms of designing. He is going to be doing some great work for a long time to come, so that's cool. The other honorable mention was the uh, Millet Knives slash TJ Schwartz Torrent. Um, I met both the Millet crew as well as TJ, and uh, this knife is going to be impressive. It is a small knife. It's going to be, I want to say, in like the 3.25-ish range, and uh, it is pretty great. They've made a lot of great design decisions here, and it just overall, it's going to be a great little pocket rocket style knife uh, for everyday carry coming from an American-made company. A uh, beautiful freaking thing. Unfortunately, the models they had there didn't have everything fully fitted. I gather they were working on the prototypes the night before they left. And the thing is, it is still a very, very nice little knife, even in this form, and it's absolutely one that I'm going to be checking out. So, uh, yeah, that's the Millet Torrent. Uh, now let's go into the, uh, the, the, the top four here. Okay, so fourth place for me uh, was the Alamic Cutlery Swish. Many of you may recall that the uh, Wayfarer 247 from Alamic Cutlery uh, won my Best Knife of 2016 award, uh, and it absolutely deserved it, because holy crap, that the finish was pretty much perfect, that the action was pretty much perfect. It was just a great, incredible freaking knife, and this is in many ways the spiritual successor. It is a big knife, 100%. Um, absolutely freaking huge. But the thing is, it's now been in production for a while. They've got it working beautifully. The, the tenth on this guy is actually in some ways nicer than the 247. The 247 had a crazy strong detent. It worked out nicely with the big long flipper tab, but uh, this guy, I, I like the action of a little bit. And the knife is, as a result, a little bit smoother overall. But they also have all kinds of crazy customization offerings, including some skeletonized handles that are just out of this freaking world. And and they've just, I think they've got themselves another hit on the hand. It's absolutely huge for my taste, so it didn't rank much higher. And it's probably, it's a knife I want to review, but it's probably not a knife I'm going to own given its size. But the thing is, I am absolutely looking forward to checking this out in the future. This is a spectacular little knife. Next guy, a, for third place, is the Koenig Knives Arius. Um, this is a guy, Bill Koenig, his sister Krista, who is the CNC person, uh, a machinist and a production guy. And I stopped by their booth, and at that time, they only had four of these guys left, and that doesn't surprise surprise me at all. Um, because they are doing great freaking work here. The action was great. The fit and finish were great. The, the ergonomics were great. The great design. Uh, these little patterns here were a little bit on the sharper side, but you know what? I was really, really impressed with this little knife, and so I absolutely want to check one of these guys out. I, I want to spend a little bit more time with it. Um, so very, very impressive little knife here from Koenig Knives. Number two, the uh, runner-up is this little guy, the Busker by Alamic Cutlery. I know Alamic shows up twice, but they're doing such damn good work. So they had two of these little guys at the table, and I am in love. Let's just put it that way. This is a small little folder. Uh, to give you a size comparison, Spyderco Delicacy, that's why he's carrying this little guy. But it is a small knife. It's kind of Spyderco Techno-esque in, uh, in its target. But the thing is, it is a beautiful... Oh, whoop. 
well, yeah, it's still true, but it is a beautiful little thing because it actually has a blade that cuts things. It has a beautiful ergonomic handle, an opening that it can act like a front flipper, a back flipper, or any number of things. It's got a finger choil here for me. I mean, this is just so made for me. It's so cool. Big, big freaking fan of it. Um, right now, they're starting off making it as a handmade custom knife, but there will be a mid-tech version uh, coming in this fall, apparently. But thing is, even as a full custom, full TI, high-end steel, beautiful fit and finish sort of knife, they're charging $395 bucks for this. Holy crap. That's, that's impressive. And so this right here was a damn it, take my money moment for me. Uh, this was, I gather, uh, Eugene's father's knife. This is Eugene's personal knife, and I wanted to buy it, but the bastard wouldn't sell it to me. Something about prototype my own personal knife. I don't care. No excuses. But anyways, this is going to be an incredible knife. I cannot wait to own this guy. I've got them set up to message me the moment they're willing to sell me one, because I want it bad. And, uh, yeah, so in case you can't tell, Alamic's actually kind of killing it lately. I'm really impressed with this stuff. But, uh, they, they, yeah. So, again, Eugene, if you're watching this, take my freaking money. Get me one of these knives. But the grand prize for me, actually, I was pretty sure it was going to be the busker until finally I stopped at one final booth uh, that really, really, really blew me away. And it's the only other, oh, my God, take my money moment I had. That was the Brad Southern Mini Talk. So, um, Brad Southern is a well-known knife maker. He made the Spyderco Southern. Huh, go figure, right? Spyderco Positron. He's got another collaboration with them coming up. And he's been a custom knife maker for years and years. Um, and it does great work. But the thing is, uh, he also had the Tolk, which is a full-size knife in the Avo, whose uh, review is going to come up before too long here, by the way. But the thing is, the Mini Tolk is one heck of a little knife. Um, the, I found this guy after the lottery had ended, but before the guy had actually come to pick it up. And it is just... A spectacular smaller everyday carry flipping knife. It's a, in the Shirogora of the on size range. 3.28 inch blade, 7.46 overall. It's thin, it's light, the action is great. And it was just a joy in the freaking pocket. I picked it up, I handled it, I was absolutely over the moon. And I believe I had my credit card out when he broke my heart and told me that the price tag next to it wasn't for sale. And so it was a lottery thing and it was sad. I entered the lottery just in case one of the guys backed out. Um, the thing is, he, he broke my heart there. Uh, but the thing is, this is going to be great because Brad has actually moved his production entirely in-house. The Tolkien, the Avo models, relied on an external manufacturer to make some of the parts, which Brad then hand-fitted. Um, but the thing is, now that he's in-house and he's been talking CNC with the Grimsmo brothers who do great work, I think he's going to be able to avoid a lot of the hiccups that hit the uh, Tolkien, the Avo, uh, which were really... Uh, well, that's going to be a beautiful thing. And the other thing is that it's coming soon. Um, in fact, uh, he's going to be doing these on a rolling pre-order sort of basis. You can choose your options, have the knife made to spec, and he's aiming for delivery of like a month, month and change, something like that, which is perfectly reasonable to me. This knife here, particularly this bottom one, the full titanium with the copper backspacer, was uh, without a doubt for me the best new knife in the show. I, the Alamic Busker is a great knife, and it's a great knife for me, but I think for a greater variety of people, this is going to be, oh my god, good. And at a first glance, uh, much like with the Busker, I am just not seeing any ugly here. Um, on the bright side, I have now ordered mine. I ordered it yesterday. It's going to be freaking awesome, uh, but it may be a little while because Brad needs to get these guys photographed and whatnot. And I told him, you know, there's no major rush. I got plenty of knives. But the Mini Tolk is just an incredible freaking knife. It is a beautiful thing, and I was so ready to steal this guy off the table and squirrel it away back with me. But alas, I'll have to wait a little bit longer. So final conclusions from Blade Show. That was one heck of a show, and there was a lot of beautiful gear there. Uh, one of the biggest questions I've been asked, though, is, Nick, what'd you pick up? Well, actually, turns out I didn't pick anything up at all. Um, I did pick up a, uh, for a buddy of mine, I picked up a Shirogorov 111, which is currently on its way back to me from Frankie and Bird, because I didn't want the TSA to steal it, let's be real here. Um, as well as a Hawk Mud for another friend of mine here locally, and, uh, so, you know, that was fun. I also got a an Enigma by Rat Bastard Hand Tools. That's actually his name. I'm not just angry at the guy, um, which is which is pretty cool, actually. I'm looking forward to reviewing that. But, uh, yeah, aside from that, and picking up a key bar, by the way, which is, uh, 
actually have my keys on me, but it's a little container for your keys. It's really nice, way better than the key smart. Aside from that, I haven't picked up anything else there at Blade Show. What I did pick up were the, uh, uh, I got on the pre-order list for the, uh, Tolk, and then uh, I, I talked to uh, Lamech because they're going to freaking sell me a busk as soon, I hope. Anyways, so that's the gear, though. Um, really, really impressive stuff. There were so many great knives out there that didn't make this cut uh, or that, frankly, I didn't have time to talk to or I didn't think to get a picture of. But uh, it's a beautiful thing, and we are in just this golden age of knife making, I think, here, where there are so many wonderful options. You know, somebody walks into that room, and I can recommend 15 knives for them that will be beautiful things, 100%, and each one is going to be different. So we are really, really lucky to be living in this time that we are in terms of modern American knife making, because holy crap, are we doing great. But uh, those are my top four and my, uh, my honorable mentions and my favorite covers. Customs. I hope you found this interesting, and uh, if you can ever make it to Blade Show, do, because oh my god, is that fun. And uh, mostly, though, I hope that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day, and that uh, the show in your life must go on. That one didn't even make sense, but I tried, right? All right, bye now.